Hello, friends. Mark Bryan here uh, from Hootie and the Blowfish on our Hootie page. Uh, just saying hello to everybody after a long time. I uh, hope everybody's doing great out there. And I'm going to just play a song while we're waiting for people to show up. Uh, and I figured I would start with uh, something from Imperfect Circle, which is the album that we have out right now. Uh, it's been out for about seven or eight months. And uh, I'm going to play a song that probably hasn't gotten a ton of attention yet. It's called Half a Day Ahead. And I have this little Miss California 7-inch here that has Half a Day Ahead on the B side. And I want to give this away. So I'm going to play the song first and then we'll talk about how I'll give it away. sort of the acoustic short version of Half a Day Ahead. Um, wow, so I hope everyone's doing great out there. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm excited to talk to everybody, hear from people, play for you. Um, I hope everybody is healthy. Um, and if you're not and you know people are not and who have uh, had the misfortune of uh, having coronavirus or passing away from it, our prayers and thoughts are with you as always. And uh, um, we feel for you, and these are tough times, so I feel blessed to get to do this for you. Um, I'm going to take some questions, but uh, first I want to tell you that I have this 7-inch, and it has Miss California from Imperfect Circle on one side, and on the other side it has the song, I just played Half a Day Ahead, and I'll give, I'm going to send this 7-inch to whoever can tell me each of the cities we recorded our six albums in. So if you can go in order one through six and tell me just the major cities, you don't even have to tell the little um, sub cities or, or suburban areas that we recorded in, just the main cities of all six albums in order. I will send you, the first person that could do it, I will send you this seven inch of Miss California and Half a Day Ahead signed. Um, okay, what's up? Who has some questions? Let's see what we got here. Uh, Mark H. asked, what am I listening to these days? Uh, that's 
A really great question. Uh, God, I, I, I hate this because I am listening to a lot of cool stuff, but I'm totally drawing a blank right now. The first thing I can tell you is I'm listening to uh, my son Kenny's new material. Um, he put out an EP with eight songs a few months ago, and I've been listening to that a lot. And then we just recorded two new songs for him out at my studio that I got to play on, and he'll be putting those out this year. So I've been listening to that. I also recorded a song for my sister, which I've been listening to a little bit, and those are really cool. I can't wait till those come out, and you can hear those. Um, what else cool am I listening to? I'm listening to a band called Young Mister a lot, out of right here out of Charleston, South Carolina, with a great... A uh, singer-songwriter named Stephen Fiore. So check out Young Mister. Um, I'll try to think of some more as we're going on. Uh, what other questions do we have here? Uh, Christine C. asks, we all want to know if you have shoes on or not. That's a great question. And of course I do not. <laughs> um, and thanks for asking. Um, it's like 80 degrees here in Charleston. So, And even though it's been a stormy day, no shoes. No shoes. Uh, let's see, should I take another question or play a song? I think um, I'm going to tell you guys and play this song because I'm, I'm putting it out this Friday. And I wrote a song about these puppies that I have. Rigo, Rosie, come. Come here. They're so lazy right now because we've been running them like crazy. Come on, Rigo. Come on, Rosie. Come up. Come up here, buddy. Come say hi. Come on. Good boy. Rosie ain't moving. Um, but there's Rigo. Rigo, say hi, buddy. It's right there. Yeah, hello, my man. Okay, so we made a video for the song too, and we're gonna put the video and the song out on Friday if we can get the video up in time, I hope. But anyway, um, it's so fun and it's just cute and it's family and it's um, and totally inspired by these dogs, so. There isn't anything cuter than a puppy, not a kitty or a birdie or a bunny or a guppy. You're a stuck-up yuppie What you want to bet You're gonna want to pet the puppies Now Riggo and Rosie had a real tough day Cuddling cozy till it's time to play Nibbling ears and noses, tails and toes They take a little drink from the garden hose Might be a sister, could be a brother You can barely tell the difference one to the other, fur so soft, melt your heart like butter. Whoops, now they're under the covers. There isn't anything cuter than a puppy, not a kitty or a birdie, a bunny or a guppy. You could be a Scrooge or a stuck up yuppie. What you want to bet, you're going to want to pet the puppy. Now I love you. You love me and these puppies we love infinity Like fluffy rays of sunshine days Never ceasing to amaze If G-O-D were a D-O-G I don't think it would astonish me They love so unconditionally Show you how good life can be There isn't anything cuter than Puppy, not a kitty or a birdie or a bunny or a guppy. You could be a Grinch or a stuck up yuppie. What you want to bet? If you don't, you'll regret. Even if they're wet, you're going to want to pet the puppies. Yeah, you know you want to pet the puppies. Everybody loves the puppies. Yeah, that's the puppy song coming out Friday. Enjoy, share with your family, uh, your little brothers and sisters or kids or whoever you got. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. How are we doing on any answers to the trivia question about the Miss California half a day ahead signed at 7-inch? Do we have any answers mm -hmm. yet? Okay. Is, uh, let's see. I'll have to evaluate afterwards because I don't have time to go through these answers but I will find the right person who came up with it first and we will reach out to you and send this thing to you um, what other questions do we have Josh ask ask who's your lead guitar hero and your rhythm guitar hero man it's fantastic um, my lead guitar hero is probably uh, Eddie Van Halen's the all-time greatest lead guitar player 
um, and combination songwriter. So I've got to put him way up top. But Jimmy Page is very influential on me because of just so many great riffs, as, as well as just being uh, one of the all-time most amazing guitar players. Also really love Mark Knopfler and how tasty his lead guitar playing is. And then the all-time greatest rhythm guitar player who can also play lead well, but is Pete Townsend from The Who. Um, he's a master composer, and he puts his chords in the background and lets uh, John Entwistle and Keith Moon, the rhythm section, take the lead in a lot of their songs, and it's just really cool. And it's, it's a great style, and it works great for great songwriting. So Pete, Pete Townsend's the answer there. Um, what else we got? Got some more questions? He asked, hot dogs or pizza? For me, pizza, but for my girl, hot dogs. So, you know, it just depends on who gets the, uh, wh whose day it is to make the choice. She's, she loves a Costco hot dog. Boy, that could have sounded bad, huh? Uh, let's see. There is, is it, there is a song you love to cover. Is there a song I love to cover? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do this song, uh, Our Dog Rosie was named after this song by Tom Waits that I like to do, so I'll do it now. It's called Rosie. for asking uh, Tom Waits Rosie and we named our dog after that song so it's kind of cool and you're gonna see her a lot on Friday in this video and boy is it cute and I, I'm gonna go ahead right now and thank um, Sarah Gray for making the video because she did a really great job so when you see it thanks to her you'll see her in the credits uh, what else is going on out there Rebecca L asked do you practice your jumps in your backyard no I think I did when I was little, maybe, not necessarily in my backyard, but I remember trying to figure out, like, anyone can stand there and do a daffy or whatever, but strap a, you know, 10-pound guitar onto yourself and try to do it. And I remember practicing that a little bit, like how to land without, like, hurting myself with the guitar. And um, I probably, the more, most of the practice came from being on stage, to be honest with you, and messing up. And trying to do windmills and hitting your cuticles and fingernails on the strings and bleeding everywhere, that kind of painful crap that happens. 
and then jumping and you know landing wrong with all that weight hanging hanging on you and that kind of. To be honest with you, I've been very fortunate not to have any major injuries, so um, I'm very happy to be 53 and still be able to jump wearing a guitar. Uh, so thank you for the question. John R asks, "Do you like playing at Barrowlands in Glasgow?" Oh my God, are you kidding? Uh, it's one of the coolest places on the planet to play a gig. Um, I had so much fun playing there 20 years ago, and again this past fall. Uh, as they say over there, the crowd is mad for it, and they just sing along to everything. Um, and I remember Gary and I got to play uh, an, the beginning of Iron Maiden, The Trooper, for the two brothers in the front row with Iron Maiden shirts on at the Barrowlands. So that was my fond memory of that. David D. asked if you anticipate a Fairweather Johnson tour. Uh, meaning like going out, oh, like we did the celebrated the guest. The 25th anniversary of Cracked Review, we could do a 25th anniversary of Fairweather Johnson. That's a really cool idea, David R. There has been no talk, but um, I like your idea. And it is now officially, officially registered in the idea column. So uh, I'll throw it out there at the next band meeting, but don't hold your breath. We'll see. David B. asked, what's your favorite song that you wrote? Uh, I don't know. Um, it's usually your most recent, right? So uh, that's a lot of songwriters will tell you that their favorite one is whatever they just wrote. And I'll use that question to let you all know that I am releasing a, a, my fourth solo album, uh, later this year, and I think I'm gonna just release them one song at a time. They're already finished. Record. I've already finished now, uh, so I'll start dropping them to you when they're ready. And probably um, my favorite from that I could play right now, but I got another. Uh, I got one that lines up because I recorded an acoustic version of a song I wrote for Hootie and the Blowfish called Wishing uh, from Musical Chairs, our Musical Chairs album. And for this album, I'm re-recording Wishing acoustically. So it's gonna sound a little bit like this. That's more than anyone around you And if you cry Would it wash away your misery Wishing it all away from you Wishing is all you'll ever do Wish I was here with you Take away your sanity 
Wishing it all away from you Wishing is all you'll ever do Wish I was here with you Then I'd be Thanks for asking. So yeah, that's uh, Wishing, a song I wrote a long time ago that I re-recorded just like that for my new album. It'll be the only old song on the album, all the rest of brand new stuff. But uh, hopefully you guys will dig it. True Hootie fans that like the, the rockin' version of that, I think will dig the acoustic version. It's just a nice change up and it shows that a good song can be done any way I feel like. And so I'm, I'm digging that. What else we got out there? How's everybody doing? Shannon N. asked why I play barefoot. Um, I uh, have a feeling when I'm barefoot that I'm connected to the earth. It, I know it sounds like totally crunchy and organic, but it's true. And I also like to play golf barefoot for the same reason. Um, I love feeling grass under my feet. I love feeling dirt under my feet. I love feeling like a smooth floor or carpet under my feet. It just feels right. And then if the surroundings uh, don't suit, I will wear shoes because I don't want to cut my feet open, obviously. And a lot of times on golf courses now, they're using pesticides. And so it's dangerous to be out there in bare feet. So I am wearing shoes more often these days, but if it were up to me, I probably would never wear them. I mean, just it just feels right to not wear them. And thanks for asking. James C. asked if I ever get injured while jumping on stage. Um, as I said earlier, I've never gotten severely injured or sprained an ankle or anything jumping on stage but this past summer I was up on the drum riser um, in San Francisco we were in San Jose at the uh, at the big amphitheater shoreline amphitheater and I was up there jamming with Gary Green on running from an angel and I went to step off the drum riser and the video wall that was in front of the drum riser was velcroed to the stage and it gave way and I went down hard the video wall landed on my ankle, and I, I thought I broke my ankle. And I, the first thing I did was keep playing because it was the middle of the song. So I got on my knees and kept playing, and I assessed the situation. That, Is my ankle broken? Can I stand up? And I tried slowly to put some weight on it, and sure enough, it wasn't broken. I could put weight on it. And I stood up, limped back to the other side of the stage, and finished the show. And uh, But that's the... That's, the closest I've ever come to injury on stage, and I wasn't even jumping. I was literally just stepping down off the riser, and the freaking thing gave way. Um, so if you were at that show this summer and you saw it, you probably were like, oh, holy shit, is he okay? And, the, and uh, it hurt like hell, but I was okay. But anyway, thanks for the question. And uh, knock on wood, hopefully no major injuries ever coming up here. What was your best performance ever? Oh, my God, how do you answer that question? Um, uh I, my favorite is still one of the, the, I talk about this show all the time, but I know we played a great show, so I, I know it was a great performance, and I'll, this is just so unforgettable, but we were in South Africa, and we played on the beach um, in South Africa at the Indian Ocean at Plettenberg Bay, and it's just such a memorable show because of the setting and the crowd, and I also felt like we were on top of our game as much as we've ever been, so I'll throw that one out there, but there's way too many to name one, but thanks for asking. Mike M. asked what your favorite guitar to play live is. Um, for a long time, it was the Cherry Sunburst Les Paul, which was the second electric that I ever bought back in high school. Um, and I still have it, and I still love playing it, but I bought a 57 Les Paul uh, special with a Bigsby. And I, I think that one I like even better than the Cherry now. Um, and for a long time, I was playing the Country Gentleman guitar that I have, the Gibson Country Gentleman, the burgundy one, only uh, with occasional milkshake. And I wasn't bringing it on tour with Hootie, but for this last tour, I brought it out and it sounded amazing. So that might be the number one of all of them, is the Country Gent, the Gibson Country Gent. Um, is there a second single from Imperfect Circle? Well, the first single, uh, if you know, was, um, uh, was Hold On. And we uh, re tried to release that at country radio, uh, I guess, without much luck. So we have recently been trying to take Miss California and push it back to some of the um, market radio and, and 
genres that we came up on, triple A, hot AC, that kind of stuff, those kind of playlists. So hopefully you'll see more of Miss California out there on playlists and maybe here and there on satellite radio or something like that. Um, would, you, would I call it an official second single? I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm not sure you could call it that. Um, I would really like to see it be a second single. Um, I'm not sure that uh, anyone knows what to do with it as a single as far as where it would fit. So, um, you know, I don't know how to answer that question. I also really hope that Wildfire Love, the Ed Sheeran co-write that we have on the album, gets a chance as a single because I really believe that that could be a big super hit. Um, so hopefully it gets a chance as a single. We'll see. I, uh, you know, I try to uh, ask those same questions in our meetings and it's tough when even the people we're working with aren't really sure what to do. It's, a, it's just a tough climate out there. So um, I wish I had more for you of, of an answer along those lines, but uh, thanks for asking. And, you know, stay positive about it. And like I tell my buddy Chris Pittman, the best thing you can do to help is share all these posts that we do about Imperfect Circle. Share, get the word out. Help us get the word out. Um, it really is a great record. We believe in it. We know it. And we know that our hardcore fans have already heard it and believe in it, too. And if you really believe in it, you can help by just sharing whatever we do to try to promote it um, and let other people know about it. And so thank you in advance for doing that. Kelly T is asking about my current golf game. Uh, I got, I played a lot this summer with Darius when we were on, the, or last summer with Darius when we were on the road, and um, got my game back to where I was a ten handicap. And then my last few rounds have been back up in the nineties, so I'm probably headed back towards my twelve handicap, which I have been for a long time. But it was nice to be a ten there for a minute. I shot eighty three uh, a couple weeks ago. I had a hole in one a couple months ago. So um, some good things were happening this spring. But now I seem to have lost it again. Oh, the elusive game of golf. Uh, but thanks for the question. In the Hootie movie, who would you want to play your role? Um, uh, man, I, w I would. I love Matthew McConaughey, so I would say him. But uh, he is. I'm like a foot taller than him, and he's like my age, and so we'd have to get somebody young. Uh, I don't know. Uh, 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 Michael Rappaport. That's my guy right there, Michael Rappaport. Am I still a Redskins fan? Um, and by the way, don't make fun of me about the Matthew McConaughey. I know I'm not as good looking as him, but it's more of the curly hair look thing that I'm going with there with the McConaughey comment. But Rappaport's my guy. All right, what was the next question? Oh, am I still a Redskins fan? I am still a Redskins fan because I'm a lifer. And what can I do about it? That's where I grew up. That's been my team since birth. Um, one of the first things I learned to say, I think, was F Dallas. Um, so I, I'm still a Redskins fan. The owner of the Redskins has made it very difficult to remain a Redskins fan. Um, the climate at that team is as low and negative as it's ever been in, in my 53 years of being alive. But I'm not going to abandon my team because of their owner. Um, it's about the players, and I think we got a good-looking squad coming up this year. I don't think they're going to be playoff ready yet, but I think they will win a few more games than last year. Great defense coming up this year. Great defense. Probably one of the best in the league looking up. So that that alone will help me continue to be a Redskins fan. So um, I could take some more questions or I could play another song. You guys want to hear one? You can't answer me, so I'm just going to go with a yes there. Um, I don't know, really know what to play. Uh, I, I was going to stay on the Imperfect Circle tip, maybe. Um, do we have any other requests out there? What's that? A fork in the road. Man, I haven't played that in so long. Let's try it. This is an old Mark Bryan song from my second solo album. End of the front. This is called Fork in the Road. A, a Fork in the Road. And I haven't played this in probably five years, so if I mess it up, hang with me. Nothing at all. Either way is better. 
better than either way Anything's better than nothing at all We, we never know That's Danielle's part And it's never mattered more than right now very much for requesting that song that I haven't played in five years. I love that song. Thank you. What else we got out there? Could you please buy the Redskins? <laughs> I would love to be that rich. I would so love to be that rich. Here's the other thing. Even if I was that rich or could put together a group of people that were rich enough to buy the Redskins, I don't think Dan Snyder's selling. So he has only one opportunity left or one option left, and that's to win. So, uh, Hail to the Redskins. We'll see where that goes. Hootie documentary update. Great question. So we are shopping it around trying to find a, um, a you know, a partner. Um, a Netflix, a HBO, a ESPN, you name it. We're looking, we're trying everybody to try to find a partner to release the Hootie documentary. It is, I would say, 80 or 90% complete and it looks great. Um, so that's the update on that. Um, there's still a chance of it coming out later this year. Uh, so hopefully, and thanks for asking. I um, wish I had more good news about that, but still waiting. Do I still teach? For 10, for 10 years, I was teaching music industry at the College of Charleston until December of 2018, at which point I uh, quit that job to go back on the road with Hootie and make a new album and so forth. Uh, and at that point, I decided not to go back to teaching at this point in my life because while I enjoyed it very much while I was doing it, I also noticed that I missed the creative part of music. And I really liked teaching it, but I really m missed making it. So I've been making my new solo album, and I think I'm just going to keep making music. I'm also building a new studio right now. So I'm kind of in that phase of uh, getting back into just creating and making and releasing music. Um, and as I said, we'll be releasing a bunch of songs as this year goes on. I've got 12 new songs on my album. I have a Mark Bryan and the Screaming Trojans track. I have a Lynn Bryan, my sister. I have a track that I produced and played on with her. And then I have two Kenny Bryan tracks that he'll be putting out. So all through the year we'll be doing that stuff, which will be really fun. But not going back to teaching anytime soon. Thanks for asking, though. Um, uh, Red Rocks. What about Red Rocks? Oh, have we ever played it? Yeah, we played Red Rocks twice. We were very fortunate. 
um, once in the 90s and once in the 2000s. And I remember being doing a show with Blues Traveler at, um, at Red Rocks, which was so cool to share a bill with them there. Um, and it's an amazing place to see a show. This past summer I went and saw the Aved Brothers there with Lake Street Dive, and it was one of the coolest shows I've ever seen. Um, it's magical when you're at Red Rocks, so thanks for asking. How does your hair still look good after quarantine? Well, thank you for saying that. Uh, I've always been able to keep longer hair because it's curly, I guess, and so it doesn't, you know, it just kind of curls up a little bit. Um, it does get to a certain point, though, where instead of throwing out, it drops down, and that's when my nose looks really huge, and I usually get it cut. But we'll see how long I go this time. You never know, maybe I'll go for the record and go with my longest hair yet, and we'll see. But um, thanks for the compliment. What part of Maryland do you miss the most? Uh, let's see. Um, probably uh, the water. Just the whole the idea of, of the Chesapeake Bay and the Eastern Shore and Ocean City and how all that's connected. And when I moved to Charleston, I made that decision to, to you know move down to Charleston and get a boat and do all of that here. But had I moved back to Maryland when I was younger, I would have done the same thing. I would have gotten a boat and moved somewhere on the water. Um, that was always what I thought I was going to do, maybe somewhere in the Annapolis area or Eastern Shore um, or maybe near Ocean City. But instead, I just chose to do that down here in Charleston, and I have no regrets. I absolutely love it here. I was in Ocean City last summer, um, and it, there was parts of it that reminded me of Charleston and other parts of it that reminded me of Jersey Shore. I love Ocean City too, and uh, and I love the Jersey Shore, but I'm really glad I live in Charleston, South Carolina. It's just fits. I've been here 20 years now, and um, I don't see myself leaving anytime soon. Um, favorite moment in Hootie history? I'm gonna have to say the one that is still so surreal to me that I don't believe I lived it unless I see it on video. When it happened in the moment, I. Didn't, I was having an outer body experience because it was so surreal. It was on the Grammys when we won our second Grammy and Kiss, back in makeup for the first time in 10 years, and Tupac Shakur were the presenters for that Grammy award. And I remember like shaking hands with Gene Simmons and just feeling like I was in a movie or a comic book or something. Like I just did not feel like it could possibly be real. Um, so I, I would say that was one of the great moments of all time. And, and Tupac called us his homeboys, which, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. It was a tremendous moment. Um, and thanks for asking. Biggest influences. Um, for me, it's like, like I said earlier, Pete Townsend's a really big one. Um, Bruce Springsteen. Um, uh, the Beatles. Gigantic influence. Um, R.E.M. The police were a major influence. Um, Zeppelin. Um, in the mid '90s, I started listening to a lot of like alt country, Jayhawks, um, you know, Wilco, Sunvolt, Uncle Tupelo. Those those bands were uh, old '97s. All of that had some some uh, influence on me later in my career. Um, what else? <clears throat> Can we release the 2004 Jammer shows? Is that when we did that? I felt like it was earlier, but maybe so, yeah. Um, that's a great idea. <clears throat> we have them. They've never been mixed, so we'd have to dive in and mix them. Um, but I bet the squirrel would love to do that. <clears throat> that's a great call. I'm going to put that um, back in the conversation. The 2004 Windjammer shows. For those of you who don't know, <coughs> it was right after we released our fourth album. That's why I thought it was earlier than 2004, but um, maybe not. Um, it was right after we released our fourth album, and we did four nights of the Windjammer and did each of the albums, did one of the albums on each night. And we've never mixed it, never released it, but that would be a really cool thing. I just want to go back and listen to it to see if it even sounds good. But thank you for reminding me of that, and thank you for asking. That's um, that's a really cool idea. What's in my cup? <laughs> just water. <laughs> um, yeah, just water right now. 
I might have some wine later. Um, best concert I've ever been to? Um, it, it's, those questions like that, there's, it's always so hard to name one, but um, the first like big rock concert I ever went to was Van Halen in the early 80s. And that, that was life changing. And then in the later 80s, when, uh, when I was growing up, I went and saw Fishbone in a club in DC when they were in their prime. And let me tell you people, if you've never seen that much energy in your life. Like I, these, they're not human. They were not human at that time. They were like, they were like rock musicians and, and acrobats all at the same time. Like stage diving flips, like it's just, the crowd was insane. I, I, that changed me. And, um, and the first time I ever saw Cowboy Mouth, same thing. Just the amount of energy that came off that stage and, and the beautiful harmonies. Like, it was like this beautiful music and all this energy at the same time. And that's what I got from Cowboy Mouth and The Who and Fishbone. And so those are, those are my three favorite live shows that I've ever seen. My favorite thing about touring is um, the whole idea of being able to um, take your music to a different crowd each night and have a different experience each night and you know ha having people relate to your music and each each town you go to you get a new batch of people that are relating to your songs whether it's in the same or different way it's just this keep it's this connection that keeps happening and uh, and it can only happen when you go on tour um, there's a connection that happens through recording and releasing music too but it's not the same as when you tour and play live and see people face to face and see their reaction to it and feel their reaction to it and see them reacting to your energy and that sort of thing and so that's just irreplaceable um, and that's my favorite thing about touring um, how did i come up with a riff for hold on so uh chris stapleton had written that song um with those chords Producer, our producer we were working with at the time, Frank Rogers, who also did a lot of Darius the solo stuff. He's like, Mark, we need, he's like, we need one of your riffs over those chords, and uh, he's like, do one of those octave things you do. So I just took those chords and came up with, uh, what is it? Yeah, just kind of came up with that riff it's something I love to do it's something I've always done and um, it fits really well and it's a nice intro for the song too I feel like um, somebody wants to see Rosie Rosie come here baby come here come to daddy come on come here Rosie come she is so lazy right now come on baby you can do it Rico come on up here buddy come on Rose I'm gonna have to go get her come on baby there you go oh that's my girl come on up here come on can you come on? There you go. Say hi to everybody. Say hi. Yeah. Rigo and Rosie had a real tough day. <laughs> um, very excited about the puppy song. Again, it's coming out Friday. Um, you'll be able to get it on iTunes and Spotify and everything this Friday. And we'll put the video out, video out with it. And it is just adorable. So please stay tuned for that. Um, what else we got going out there? How was it touring with BNL? Bare Naked Ladies are, I mean, it's, you'll be hard pressed to find a cooler bunch of guys. Um, they're wonderful, wonderful men and they are so ridiculously talented. Um, one of the things that keeps blowing me away about them is how they keep their game really fresh. Like there's all, they're always coming with new songs and with new little jokes and new covers and new medleys and, um, just really just a fresh fresh is a good word I could use for that band um, just as, as people and as artists and um, it's one of, it's, it's we've done a bunch of really cool tandem tours over the years as you guys know and I, I got to put that one at the top of the list I mean it, I, I, I don't know how you get a better co-bill than the bare naked ladies um, so thanks to those guys for coming out with us last summer and just making our tour they, they helped make it happen they just made it with us so I uh, feel terrible that their tour got canceled this summer, but they are doing some amazing stuff online. 
like this, and they're doing it as a band, so you can check them out. They're doing the thing where they, I guess, send it around to each other and then edit it together. Um, so you can you can watch that. And um, I uh, I came up with a little name for that for them, and I'm really mad that they haven't started using it yet. But it's the Bare Naked Isolates. Um, so hopefully that when the next time they do one, they're going to use the Bare Naked Isolates. We'll see. Um, all right, but yeah, just love some piano. What's the greatest lesson the music industry has taught you? I would say that you can't have expectations when you go into your career, your life, your projects. It's, um, it's taught me to, to not have expectations because it's taught me that things never go the way you think they're going to go. So you have to be able to act on your feet. You have to be able to stay open-minded. Um, you might know something's a great idea, but then you might be working with people who know something else is an even better idea. So, you know, there's, that kind of thing happens all the time. So you just can't have any expectations. You've got to kind of roll with the flow. You, you, you go with how you feel, um, and, and then you believe in that, and then you just hope for the best. And then if, if it doesn't work out the way you hoped it would, be ready to react and be ready to go figure out the next part of the plan and how to do it. So that's the thing I've learned the most is no expectations, roll with the punches, be ready for anything. Favorite show from last summer? Uh, I, I thought about this. There were several that were really cool. I'm going to name a few that stood out to me that I thought were great. Um, Maryland, for obvious reasons, for personal reasons. Uh, Boston was an amazing show. Um, Denver was an amazing show. Um, the Hollywood Bowl and Madison Square Garden were both very memorable. But my favorite, my favorite of all of them was Alpine Valley in Wisconsin. Um, it was amazing. It was the most people that we played to. It was the biggest crowd of the whole summer in the biggest venue of the whole summer. And the craziest people were in Wisconsin. I'm not kidding. They were like, you know, I mean, like just in between songs, they were the, making the most noise and there were the people that jumping around and dancing the most. So I was really blown away by the Alpine Valley crowd last summer. Thanks for, for showing up, Wisconsin. Um, any other requests? What else do we have out there? Any other requests? I mean, I haven't figured one out to play, but you can let me know. Are there any from earlier that I missed? No? Um, let's see. I'll do, I could do... Uh, should I do Turn It Up, maybe? Was there was a thankless leader Blinded by a golden ring And now there's no
outside We're free but we gotta keep our kids alive Don't let them down, turn it up When I've had enough I wanna feel the love Turn it up Turn it up Oh wait, it goes much i played a wrong song a wrong, wrong chord in the bridge too but such is life when you haven't played the song in a couple months okay what else we got any plans for a late ma'am i don't believe so i think that we are going to wait until next year but i believe the masters is still going to happen in october i just don't think there's going to be a monday after the masters until next april but thanks for the question um what's my favorite song to sing uh, I don't know. It was kind of that Tom Waits song I played earlier, but um, I had some others probably. I I'm not much of a singer, so I don't I don't. Uh, it's always my newest thing, so I think I should play you something new. Um, <clears throat> trying to think of which of the new tracks to do for you guys. The last time I played, I did I did a. Uh, Taking a ride wherever it's leading. So I want to do something different this time. Um, what would that be? We could do... Everything I ever tried to be Shaking out and stripped away from me Makes you question everything Hard to know who to call a friend Knock me down, I'm bouncing up again How much further can my body bend? Lord, I can't carry it along Try to walk that line Take my pride and bury it Let my soul light shine take you there always looking for something we can share Lord I can't carry it alone trying to walk that line take my pride and bury it let my soul light shine let your soul light shine going to be on the new solo album and that's one of my favorite songs to sing right now um, for sure let your soul light shine um, favorite REM record that changes just like my favorite REM song changes 
Right now, Perfect Circle is my favorite RM song because my friend Fred LeBlanc from Cowboy Mouth just did a killer cover of it. And obviously also because we somewhat named our album after it. But So that one's in my head right now and just so amazing. Look it up, Perfect Circle by R.E.M. And that is on the album Murmur, which is sometimes one of my favorite R.E.M. albums. But right now, my favorite R.E.M. album is Life's Rich Pageant. It was produced by Don Gaiman, who produced four of the first five Hootie albums. And... Um, he just did a bang up job on it. It's got a bunch of their cool tracks and it came out in like Hootie's junior year in college. So it just was, you know, very influential on us. So, um, that, that right now, Les Rich Pageant is right now my favorite R.A.M. album. So thanks for that question too. What else we got out there? Andy Moy asks if you are still mad at him for throwing your bike in the creek. Yes, you're an asshole. Um, no, I love you, Andy. Um, <laughs> he, he decided, uh, me and my buddy Lip, um, they, Andy and my buddy Chris Mayer decided as a practical joke, they would throw our bikes in the creek behind Watkins Mill Elementary. And, uh, that's where we found them in the creek rusting away for hours. Um, but they still worked fine and I forgive you, Andy, and I love you very much. And you got yours coming. Don't forget that. You got yours coming. Story behind Not Even the Trees. Um, Dean had brought in this just killer bass line and these uh, chords that go along with it. He, he, Dean wrote the music to that. And um, it was right around the time when Darius's mom had passed away. It was soon after, I guess. And um, we were tracking, we, we were deciding which songs to put on Cracked Rear View. And Not Even the Trees was the newest track at the time. And we all loved it so much. And then when Darius wrote the lyrics, uh, you know, about, I guess, uh, missing his mom and his mom being in a better place. And um, we kind of knew that it had to be on the album. So that's my favorite part about Not Even Trees. It's like the newest of all the tracks on Crack Review at the time. And, and um, again, just I love what Dean did with the musical arrangement. And we also added these really cool glasses that Sony played to go along with the song you can hear it it's like it's like a you know a pencil or a knife or something uh, tinking a glass with water tinking glasses with water in it that match the key of the song um listen for it next time you listen not even the trees and see if you hear a little like tink 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 it's nice um thanks for the question favorite music slash sports memorabilia that i own or that I've seen, like, oh, that I have. So I have a uh, um, a Cal Ripken All-Star jersey, and there were only like 85 of them made or something, and I have one that's signed by Cal. That's pretty much my favorite. I also have a Gibson SG, vintage SG, signed by John Daly. And it's, the, the funny story about that is, I was at John's house, and he had all these guitars, and a lot of them were kind of throwaway, just memorabilia guitars. And then I came across this Gibson SG, and I was like, dude, this thing's amazing. You have a vintage SG in your collection. He's like, oh, Marky, you can have it, man. And I was like, no, I don't want it, John. I want, you know, this is your badass guitar. Like, this is the one you should keep. He's like, oh, man, I don't care, man. So I, I was like, well, I'm not taking it. So I left his house, went home. Two weeks later, the guitar shows up on my doorstep, signed by John Daly, a vintage SG. And he signed it on the front. I'm still mad at him for not signing it on the back since it's a vintage SG. But since it's John Daly's name on it, I'm sure it'll make the guitar worth a lot more. So um, those are my two favorite pieces. Thanks for asking. Tuckerstown. I've never sung that song once in my life. Uh, so I can't do it. But thank you for the request. Um, I could probably try. But I've never done it. I'd probably make a fool out of myself doing it. And I also don't know if I'd remember the words because I've never sung it once in my life. But, uh... I don't even remember the first word. I remember the second verse. I'm going down to talk a sound. Yeah, no, sorry. Never, never sung that song once in my life. Getting a request for one more Hootie song. Uh... 
trying to think of a good one to do. Um, uh, I, the last time I played, I did Earth Stop, Cold of Dawn, and Only Want to Be With You. So, and I just did Wishing, and what else? Um, what, could, what else could I pull out that I haven't played in a while? I was covering Honey Screw for a while. That's kind of fun. I can't promise you I'm going to remember all the lyrics. Again, because it's not a song I usually sing. I was doing this about a year and a half ago. Let's see if I can remember it. Fly inside, see the deal Coming on to a story just told About a man who was the life of a funeral Grabbing on to a new soul He just stole for a dream he don't believe in And now she sits and she yells for a smile Don't let the sun make me feel over let me in, let me in, let me in Is it me? Yeah Or is it honey? We all sing fun you guys thank you so much for listening and having me and 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 asking all these cool questions and listening to my answers and i really appreciate you and love you and hope to see you again soon um sorry for butchering honey screw and i had a blast love you see you soon